Hi crafty friends, it's Donna here, and I've got a card to share with you today that is like a modern take on decoupage, with lots of layers that stand up from the card. For those of you that don't know me, I'm an Australian, living in Tokyo, Japan, who absolutely loves card making. Let's start today's card. For the background, I'm using the Distressed Mesh stencil from Paper Rose, and I'm gluing that down on the back of my card. I always stick my tape to my hand or my clothing first before sticking it to the paper so that it's not too sticky and I don't tear my paper when I remove it later. Now onto the ink blending. I've got a bunch of different Distress inks here, ranging from yellow through the oranges and into hot pink. You don't need this many colours because when you blend you actually get intermediate colours but I had them all out because I wasn't sure exactly which direction I wanted to go with them. Starting in the centre, the colours I used today were Scattered Straw, Dried Marigold, Spiced Marmalade, Ripe Persimmon and Picked Raspberry. I'll list all of those in the description below and also on the coordinating blog post. And here's the moment where I remember you, my lovely viewers, and turn the distress inks around so that you can read the labels. And here's my favourite moment, pulling up the stencil to reveal what's underneath. In order to make the focal image, I've stamped the Lotus Bouquet stamp set three times onto white card. For the third stamping, I just stamped the very middle of the main flower because that was the only part that was going to be three layers high. I first coloured and cut out the very top layer using a mix of yellows. Once that top layer is coloured, I don't need to put any detail into any layer that's going to sit underneath it. As long as I fill that shape in with the general colour, that will be enough. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. To colour the petals of the lotus, I picked a hot pink combination and an orange combination, and I blended those in the middle. I really wanted the colours in the flower and the background to echo one another. Here I'm just laying down that top layer and when I move it away I'm just going to use a plain yellow and fill in that whole area because all you'll see of it is a little smidge from the side perhaps. Then I'm going to fussy cut out that next layer cutting exactly on the black line. Once that layer is cut, I use a Memento Tuxedo Black marker to cover the white core of the card. I always hold the pen with the body of the pen on the back of each shape so that if I slip, I'm only going to scribble on the back of the shape. In most flowers, buds are always darker than open blooms, and so I've used the darkest of my colours to colour the two buds. I know that leaves are usually green, but I felt like a pop of green would interrupt the colour scheme of this card, and so I've made my leaves yellow. I've just popped a tiny hint of orange into the shadow areas, just to give them a little bit of depth.
once all the different layers are coloured and cut and have their black borders, then it's time to construct the card. And at this point I realised that it would really make my life a lot easier if I were to have my base image stamped onto my ink blended background. And so that's what I did next. When it comes to constructing the card, the first layers are all glued flat to the page. The next layers I've popped either with foam tape, in the case of the second layer of petals of the main bloom, or with a mix of foam tape and glue, in the case of all of the flower centres and the bottom of the leaves. For these, I've put foam tape at the top and some glue at the bottom so that the piece angles up and I've taken some photos to try and show you what that looks like close up. The sentiment for today's card comes from a paper pack from Paper Rose called Really Rainbow and I thought it was just perfect for the times. I've mounted it onto a little bit of black so that it would really stand out and tucked it into the lotus leaf so it highlights the 3D nature of the card. I'm going to leave you with some images of the card, including some side-on shots so that you can see the dimension. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the thumbs up button, and if you'd like to see more, then click subscribe to see what I get up to next. Stay safe everybody.